Hi and welcome to round six of the Isaac Walton Midweek Silverfish League. This being the final round. It's been put off a few times. It should have been finished before Christmas. But it's been put off a few times due to illness and bad weather. So this is the 25th of January and it's finally getting completed. Being in the rotation I'm on means I'm on middle pool and I've drawn peg seven, which I was quite happy with as I drew this peg a few weeks before in an open match and won it with 17 pound of silvers. And I also won the cart match that day with, oh, I can't remember the weight actually. It wasn't a lot, it was about 16 pound. But like I say, I'm quite happy with this. There's five of us on the pool because there's a couple of now shows. It sometimes happens at the end of leagues when the people are doing now good or whatever happens anyway. We've had to break ice on this pool today. All of us except for one anyway. Mark Wilton came and pleasure fished on Monday to try and get a heads up and he's actually drawn the same peg that he pleasure fished. So he's the only one on the pool that hasn't had to break eyes. It's not thick, it's probably about a quarter of an inch thick. You had to put the breaker through it though because you couldn't break it with anything else. I tried throwing the petrol can on the rope and all it did was break it up and I couldn't saw through it. So I got my breaker, threw it through the ice held onto the breaker so it didn't hit the bottom, sawed through the ice to cut it into sheets and then tried to push it underneath the ice around it. I've broke it so I can get four lines in, two out, a top two and two in front of me and two down the edges. When I say down the edges, I mean down the shelves. It's probably a metre off the bank either way. And when I've plumbed up, pretty much all four lines are the same depth. So it's a nice, easy setup. Three rigs. Two 4x10 rigs and a 4x12 rig. The 4x12 rig will be what I start on. And I'll use hook baits like pinkies, maggots and pellets on that. And then I've got a 4x10 rig which is set at the same depth. Obviously just strung out and it's a bit lighter for through the water. And then I've set up a shallow rig which is probably a foot shorter. So if I do fish it, I'll start at a foot off bottom. But we'll see how it goes first. I put a ball of grain bait on each line and it's Sonia Bates Crushed Expander. I've put a ball, perhaps the size of a snooker ball, let's say, on three lines. And then the line I started on, I put just a little nugget in and I plan to just put grain bait on that line in little tiny balls as I go in. The other lines, I'm going to throw casters over them to just try and drag whatever into the peg. And then hopefully, like I say, catch a few shallow fish. Started this line by just putting that nugget of ground bait in initially. And then every time I go out on it, I'm putting a little tiny ball on, on the top two and two line. And if you notice, look, I've added a section and I'm going past it. So I'm fishing past where I fed. I never had a bite initially over the top of the ground bait. But a lot of the time, fish will hang back off the feed. Especially skimmers. You'll catch them out past where you're fed. So I've added that section. I'm fishing a single maggot. And then obviously I've not had a bite this time. So I'm moving over to my caster line now. Where I've been throwing the casters to see if there's anything turned up in this line. The beauty of having the same depth on all your lines. You can just pick the rig up and move it. I've caught a lot of bream on this pool on casters, especially on this line I'm fishing now, which is just away from the bank. And I'll be using the 4 bit tent rig on this one mainly, so as I can have a nice slow fall through the water. It's about four and a half feet deep, and it takes a little while for that rig to settle, but that's what I want. I want it to be able to wash that bait down. Now we've started the match, and like I said, Wilton, he was the only one who hadn't got a break ice. And that putting that bait in on Monday has obviously helped the peg because he's off to an absolute flyer. He's having a fish a chuck and the more skimmers. Everybody else on the pool struggling at the minute, bar him. Now 
Now, he's one place behind me in the league after we've took the droppers off. And I think I'm three points in front of him. I'm winning the league and he's three points behind me. And the way it's looking at the minute, he could actually overtake me because he's winning the pool. And at the minute, I feel like I'm in fourth place. So I'm only beating one on the pool at the minute. If that happens at the end, he'll win the league and I'll finish second. I've got to try my best not to let that happen. I don't want that to happen. I want to win this league. So this line I'm on now, like I said, I'm just putting a little tiny nuggets of crushed expander and I'm putting a single hook bait over it. You'll notice I've added another section there. So I'm feeding my grain bait at two plus two and then I'm adding half a section and fishing past it. Because sometimes them skimmers sit off the feed. Well, a lot of the fish here will sit off the feed. There's another hybrid. I've had this on single red maggot again. And that, again, that's past the feed. Half a section, maybe nearly half a section. Wilton's still bagging. And Ed, which is the one on the right, the picture you can see there, he started having a few. And Dave Pickering, on arguably the best peg on the pool, he's catching a few as well. And Tony Walsh is to the left off screen. He's not catching at all. At the minute, I feel like me and him are too far up the pool. It just depends on how long it takes for the fish to actually come into the pegs as to whether we're going to catch anybody up. Still on the maggot here. And it's not looking good. I'm really, really worried. But I'll just keep plugging away and hoping something will happen. Hi. Laying that rig out, so it's just a nice slow fall through the water, so I can try and attract any fish on the way down. I'm keeping bait going on on the other three lines. I'm only putting a bit of caster in. I've got a point with me, and I expect to have half a point left at the end of the match. So over three lines, I'm not feeding much bait. And the beauty about it being virtually the same depth on all the lines, you can just pick the rig up and drop it in anywhere. This line was really good for me the last match. Obviously there was no ice on the pool that day and it is melting today. So ice when it melts, cold water sinks, you don't know what effect that's going to have on the fish. But this line was really good last time. I had two decent bream off this line. Not the today yet. I had them quite early as well on that match. It's slipping away. No. And this line I intend to fish a single maggot or a single no. caster over the top of it. Again, I'm throwing casters and I've put a ball of ground bait at the start. And it just didn't seem to have any fish in the peg at all at the minute, barring little ones. If you get a bite off a line, you've got to move again. Be lucky to catch more than two fish off any line. But we'll line. keep plugging away and just out to catch some skimmers at some point. That's a bummer. At the minute, I've got two hybrids and a few routes. And my ice is shifting, look. Looks like it's going to close in on me. Can't seem to get many bites off any line. So I'm having to keep moving around. 
later on in the day this line does come good and you'll see how I catch them in a bit. Now bites there again. Try the right hand edge. Oh dear. See it's about a metre off the bank that is. I didn't want to come tight into the edge because it does shallow up a bit. The good thing about this pool is you haven't got to go far to catch the skimmers. You haven't got to ship out long. Top two and two is as long as you need to go on most of the pegs. Obviously, I would have liked to have broke the ice further out to try a little bit further, but you don't normally need to go that far. No. I'll only go past top two and two or top two and three as a final resort, usually. Put a little ball in again. Tiny little ball of crushed expander. I've mixed it quite wet, so is it sinks down quite well before opening up. Just drop that in. Putting the section back on and shipping out past it. At some point during the match, you should catch over the top of it. But at the moment, you've got to ship past it to get anywhere near any fish. And a lot of them are very small. It's a perfect method for catching skimmers when they're there. That ice has shifted over to my top two plus two line on the left. And it won't be long before it's in that left hand edge. I'm going to have to push it out of the way in a bit. Have a little roach. All down that end of the pool. I'm happy to just put fish in the net at the minute while I'm waiting for something to turn up. Hopefully some skimmers. Not feeding every drop in either. But I don't think there's any point at the minute because I'm not getting enough bites to warrant it. I don't know about cheese. Another little fish. Now oh, this is better. Ooh, there's a skimmer. This is more likey. I've got a skimmer off. You don't fall off, Larry. Single six slip elastic. Original slip, that is. And there we go, there's a beautiful fish. There's a nice bream. That builds my hopes up a little bit anyway. Already too far in front. Already too far in front. I had that on double pinky. So I'll try that again. Give it another little ball. And that one was right over the top of the feed. So we'll see if there's any more there. Another little fish. Need to catch some more of them skimmers if I can. It's a cracking pool this is, it's got loads of skimmers in it. And there's some 
big bream in here as well. If you can latch onto them bream, you can have a cracking day's fishing. At the moment, it seems mostly roach are about. The skimmers tend to push the roach out when they do turn up. I'm doing okay at the minute, but I'm still in fourth place. But at least I'm catching some fish. Shipping past the feed again here, look. Mark's still bagging, he's caught some chub down there as well. Ed's had a chub as well. And Dave Pickering's catching some skimmers. I don't feel like there's many skimmers here. Don't tell me worms are working. There we go, he's the first one. Hopefully we'll get a few of these throughout the day now. Have you fed worm, Mark? They're not the biggest damp ones, but still, on they're worth catching. Five, six cents. Keeping that little ball of ground bait going in and still feeding casters on my other lines. I had that skimmer right over the top of the feed again. I'm only picking a pinch of casters up to feed on the other lines. There's only like four or five casters got in there then. There's another skimmer of a decent one. Look at that. Come on, baby. This is helping. See how clear the water is, look. Soaring quite deep down. And they're definitely what you want. Nearly two pound these fish are. But as always, you're not getting many bites off the line. You've got to keep moving around the peg. That's why it's good to have four lines going so you can keep rotating through them. Because you're not getting many bites off any line. Well, unless you're on Wilton's peg and he's having a fisher chuck still. I'm changing down to the 4x10 rig now to give it a nice slow fall. See if that'll get me any bites quicker. Run a single caster on. And lay it out and hold on to it. And watch that rig fall through the water. I usually put a shot right underneath the float to give the float a start. And then you can watch the rig all the way down. If you get any bites on the drop, like that one was, you can pick up on it. It's slightly better roach. Try this left hand edge again. I finally hooked a fish there. Little perch. Not exactly what I was looking for. Feel like I'm making a little bit happen now. I'm still behind all these three. What's going on? But things are looking better now. Things seem to be starting to happen in the peg. Well, 
and it started to rain. Lovely. You can see over there that the pool's still iced. It looks like slightly dappled water in front of me and then it looks flat past there. That's all the ice still on the pool. This cast line starting to bring a few fish in now. Schema. That's the only trouble when you're throwing casters in. That can bring carp into the peg as well. Don't really want that happening. It's only a little one though. It is a carp. One of the stocky mirror carp. Into the carp net. Give the camera a wipe. Have another look down that edge. I'm rotating these two lines for a bit at the moment because there seems to be the odd fish about there. And I'm struggling on the lines to my right. But while I'm fishing these, I'm giving them pegs time to bring fish in. Oh no. What's happened there? Look. I got a half decent fish on as well. Landing nets fell apart. Try and keep him on while I get down there and get it back. There you go, him. That's a full storm after ever happened. You're not Just prepared another ball to feed again. Size of a snooker ball again. And drop that over my left hand line. Same again to my right hand line. That line hasn't produced at all yet. We'll keep feeding it. We'll see what happens later on. I've caught off three of the four lines I've fed up to yet. I'm going back out over the grain bait. With a little nugget. Hold on to that and watch it through the water. There's another fish. Skimmer again. I'm 
the last few times I've been on this bank, this peg and the peg to my left, which would be peg 10, which is they normally use. I've caught a chub each time I've been on them, and they're usually worth catching them a pound and a half to two pound a piece. I could really do with one or two of those today. Because there doesn't seem to be too many of these skimmers here. I'll go in, I'll have one or two occasionally, but then I can't get another one. The rigging, hold on to it. Feed me other lines. Watch that bait go down. So I've just come off that line again because I've got no more bites. Little perch, that's the first fish I've caught down that right end edge. At least something's starting to happen. Rain's coming again. There's another skimmer. Decent one again. First, I think it's a carp. But it's not. It's a foul up bream. Please stay on. Get in that net. In the wing, look. I don't care where he's hooked, he's in the spray bag now. No real runs of fish there, though. You'll catch a couple, couple of netters and then it's back to tiny fish. You've got to keep moving around. The ice is melted back a bit now. So I'm going to put another line further out, see if I can get any skimmers. So I feel like I'm really struggling at the minute. Same rig, I've just got to add another inch or two to the depth. As you can see, the sun's come out. Very changeable, the weather on the day. You go from bright sunshine to black clouds and rain. Put a little ball of ground bait out there with a few casters in. See if that will produce anything. Leave it alone for 10 minutes. And then I'll drop on it. Pick up the right rig first. Just mark the depth on that. And then move it back to its original position so I can carry on on the other lines.
drop my git on again. We'll have a look down that shelf on the right hand side again. Still waiting for this line to really start producing. It's not been very good compared to the other lines. Until now. That's more like it. Bream. Catch a lot of bream down the edges on these pools. Especially this one. And these are real bonus fish on these silver fish matches. Look at him flapping around just under the surface. Gorgeous. Another near two pound fish. Single red maggot. Wilton still bagging. And those two across are still catching. I'm not sure whether I'm in front or behind, but I'm close. Hold on to that rig again. Watch it go through the water. See, I'm not throwing many casters in. Just twos and threes. Yeah. Oh, another bream. Come on. Let's put the cat amongst the pigeons. Come on, I'm right back in this match now. Still behind Mark. But as long as he doesn't finish three places in front of me, I don't care. This left hand edge is starting to produce a few fish as well now. Mostly roach. Some of them are a good stamp. Like that one. Six, seven ounce that. Feel like I'm doing well now. Start to put some fish in the net. Try that line out long. And I have one bite on it, but it's a little roach. Turns out to be a waste of time. So I'm not going to persist with this line. I'll just keep rotating the lines. Keep rotating those lines. Keep putting a few fish in the net. Slightly too big to swing that one. Another roach again. You should have remembered my word. <laughs> now I'm all bream down this edge, but at least I'm catching a few fish. So that's another line I can keep going round. Can add that to my rotation. Starting to get a few roach in this line as well now. And the rain's back again, look.
worth catching these roach are. All on a single caster. Feel like I must be up there now. I'm still behind Mark. Give that another ball of ground bait. It hasn't produced for a while that line. This line on the left. I never really caught many fish out of where I was throwing the casters. I caught them all way off the feed. So I'm chucking the casters perhaps a metre off the bank and I'm catching most of my fish between a metre and a half, between a metre and a metre and a half past that. So I'm sitting well off the feed. And if I let the rig settle, it doesn't go under. I'm getting most of the bites as it's falling through the water. So a 4 by 10 rig's bang on really because it can gently fall through the water and you can watch the rig go down. And 99% of your bites are on the drop. And look at that, some of these fish are a lovely stamp. See, look, see where my pole's aiming there? That's got to be a metre and a half away from where I'm throwing my casters. So I'm sitting well off the feed. I tried my shallow rig over it, but never had a bite. I wanted the full depth rig, but you'd get the bites on the drop. So they were definitely off bottom. But the shallow rig, they just wouldn't nab. But you'd only catch a few and then you've got to move again. So I'll just have a look over that grain bait again. And I've got another skimmer. Only a little in. But gratefully received. Fell off in the net. And back down that left hand side again. And this line got stronger and stronger as the match went on. Towards the last area, it got really good. The stamp of the fish improved. It was some lovely fish I was catching. Mostly roach with the odd skimmer in. Again, that was on the drop. Ah, that's sort of a spanner in the works. It's a carp. I was hoping it would be a bream. But it's not a bream pulling this hard. I hope I haven't attracted a few of these into the peg. But I've not done too bad. This is only the second one I've hooked all day. At first I thought, oh, could it be? Yeah. I've not done too bad. This is only the second one I've hooked all day. And not very big look. Hey. Yeah, I thought to duck to another one here. It ended up being a roach. Lovely. Yeah. 
just watching what's going on around the pool. Hoping that I'm doing okay. Feel like I've hooked another car up here. Guess what? There's a rubber dub dub. <laughs> No, I think he might be a chub. <laughs> I think it's a chub. <laughs> yeah, it's a chub. <laughs> so nearly little than that. Can I have one day on? <laughs> well, hang on, he ain't in the cool. day. Yay, I've got me a chub. It's not a big one. Can I have one day on? <laughs> well, it's definitely the smallest one I've ever caught out of this pool. This line's really come good now. Yeah, everything's on the cast, you know. Seems to be a lot of fish in the peg. But like I said, I'm catching them miles away from where I'm putting the feed in. Only throwing fours and fives of casters. And I'm fishing nowhere near them. If you put your rig over the top of them, for most of the match, you wouldn't get a bite. Very far away from the feed, I'm actually catching them. Well, at the minute, it's solid. Oh, here he goes, look. Proper and now dead. Put my third section on here as well, so I can get that little bit further out. And that big chunk of ice that was to my right has broke off. It's threatening to sit on top of where I'm catching all my fish. So I'm using my landing net trying to push it away. I should keep it at bay for a bit. So the bite slowed down a bit on that line further out. So I'm just going to try the shallow rig right over the top of where I've been throwing the casters. It's really close to the end of the match now. There's probably only about five or six minutes left. So I want to see if those fish have eventually turned up on them. So I'm going straight over the top of where I've been throwing the casters. That's set at about a foot off deck. Some fish there. I'm using a size 16 SFLB with the caster, and when I talked about it on the day with a few of the anglers that were there, they said that's a big hook. I don't consider it to be a big hook when you're fishing the caster because you're putting most of the hook into the caster. All that you can see is the top end of the spade and the point out the side of the hook. So I don't consider a size 16 that big at all. Oh, 10 hook lengths. These fish are right over the top of the feed now. Beautiful. Have a nice roach again. Trying to select the darkest caster to hook. I like to put a dark caster on the hook when I'm fishing for roach. 
but I'd like to use a dark cast to full stop. And that's your lot. Well done, that's it, it's all over. Have I done enough? Right, when the scales turned up, Tony Walsh had weighed nine pound odd, Dave Pickering had weighed fourteen pound summer, and then Ed had weighed seventeen. I felt that I was close, but I wasn't sure. Now that Mark Wilton weighed twenty two pound, well done Mark. He had a couple of decent chub, and then he had some bream turn up turn up late on. And I thought he'd have thirty plus pound to be honest. The wolf weighed twenty pound odd. That secured second on the pool, which also meant I secured the title. So I've won the Silverfish League. Over the moon. I had that one round where I couldn't make it. So I had a seven points. I had the other five matches I fished. I won three sections and I came second twice. I'm happy with that. Mark ended up two points behind me to take second place. <laughs> Retired bank manager he is. Here we go, this is a presentation of the uh, final of the Win Win Silverfish Winter League. Over to Mark. Thank you sir. First of all, I'd like, just like to say a few thank yous because mm. it's not easy running these matches, but people like George mm. and especially Trisha, <coughs> who have helped out with the food, the pegging, sorting out the weighing in, absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cheers. Do with a few more breathing. Yeah. Now then, today's <coughs> results on the day. A bit of a, a bit of a few stews inquiries. Um, Tony <coughs> Walsh says he's not caught anything, and he's right. <laughs> um, George Taylor. Oh, I can't understand this one, but they will come to that in a second. Um, but first on the canal today was Richard Pedler with ten pound three ounces. Well done, well done. Well done Richard. Well done, young man. Oh, we've been lucky. Well, right, well done. Thank they have you. Different payouts because it's five angles, six angles, seven angles. Okay. Um, and second on the canal today, which is the Stewards' inquiry, because he's weighed six pound fifteen, fished a blind of a match. George, the owner. Hey! Hey! Uh, Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, money as well. Yeah, money as well. But thank you. I forgot to say that George has been so kind today. He's really enjoyed these matches, and I think we all have, yeah. yeah. He's decided to donate the peg fees to the matches, which is really kind. Of him. Thank you. As a as a yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> On the bottom pool, they have been consistent. Chat called Mark Capon weighed £13.2 to win it. Well done, Mark. Well done, Mark. Mark, that was a good eight pound. It was a uh, <laughs> And second on the bottom pool, with another good weight, with just close behind him, 12 pounds of them, Gas Clowns. Well done, Gaz. Well done, Gaz. Top man again. Stewards' inquiry. 
Yeah, I've, I've paid the money up. Man. I was just going to say, I'm quite happy with my pay. Stop filming. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. I, I would think you were. Yeah. It's going to get boring. I've more than him. I know. <laughs> I'll give the money up, Ron. Beg your pardon. Sorry. So you sort that out right after the yeah, filming. You should have 40 quid for the extra bag. Yeah, I'll give you 60. You gave me 60. Yeah, yeah, wait till you're good. Two pounds each. Right. So, where am I now? What's Mark supposed to have? George on the bottom pool, on the canal, he's got um, 20 quid, that's it. You give me 30. He's got it. Just give it his No, no, he's been giving me wrong money. I'm giving the wrong money. Thank you, Father. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes to see that. Nobody likes to see that. No. Nobody. I win a bit, win a bit of money and they take it back off me. That's all yours then, sir. Thank you. Confusion reigns. Now, the middle pool. The middle pool today fish well. Uh, second place. They're very, very consistent. Dave Brown with £20, 10 ounces. Well, well done, Dave Brown. Well done. Don't forget my money for my chip balm. Now then, <coughs> the final Sue's inquiry, because it has a lot of stick today, okay. this bloke has. Well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Practicing, relating. Yeah. A banker, ice breaking, ice breaking. That's going to be stopped. It's going to be So I've weighed twenty-two pound two to win the pool with uh, third place, and also I've won the cart match, which is the first time I've ever won the cart match. <laughs> yeah. Cheers! He beat he beat one me ounce. by one ounce for the cart net. One ounce. Net. Yeah. Um, one ounce. One ounce. And Richard Peddler shoot the net, shoot the water off, and that's where the one ounce went. Well done, Richard. Now then, overall, the league results, uh, very, very close, very close indeed. It's been great, great this, uh, this, this news. In fifth place, Steve Dudley. Oh, Hold on, Steve. Man. With five points. With four points. Eight? No. Oh, no, that's fifth place. Fifth place, sorry. Fifth place. <laughs> Fourth Good place. Time. <laughs> and then have the money back. <laughs> Fourth place then is Gas Clouds. Well done, Gaz. Gas has weighed a total of seventy nine pounds overall. Brilliant. Eleven points. Eleven points. With ten points. The weight is sixty nine pound four. In third place, come right from the back after a poor start. Stormer. Stormer. Well done, Mark. In second place, with a weight of eighty-eight pound three overall, with two point, uh, with eight points, is myself. Yeah. So thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> well done, Matt. Well I knew it was going to be hard to stop this bloke from the very first yeah. round. He absolutely fish the blind. I think everybody will agree that he's uh, he's pretty well unbeatable. He's well done, Paul. One pound ten. <laughs> he's gone first. <laughs> the ever consistent Dave Brown. Dave well Brown. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. And that concludes this festival. Well, That's it. Well organised, Mark. Well